Hey YouTubers, again this is Lonnie Clark and I'm here with my friend Louisa Hamachek. Louisa, you're kind of in the darkness, won't you? Here, I'll just sit back like this. Yeah, good idea. That okay. way she can see, can see you because otherwise okay. you're in the darkness. But we wanted to talk, uh, Louisa is an anti-nuke activist and unfortunately we have people who have been doing this for way too long and it's time for people like me who never knew anything about it who actually refused to even go see Dr. Helen Caldicott in what year was that, 2008? Remember you asked me? Okay. Was that 2008 when I she don't was remember. here? I don't know. Yeah, it was like 2008 or something like that. Okay. And I was too busy, couldn't, see, couldn't go see Dr. Helen Caldicott, and then Fukushima happened and it changed everything for me. Yeah. But Louisa is studying, and she wants to discuss her books because we are talking about the Columbia Generating Station, and the things that she's studying has a huge impact on the urgency of why we have to close the Columbia Generating Station. So I'll just let yeah. you talk about that. Yeah. Um, I've been um, concerned about the Columbia Plateau or the Columbia Basin different ways that we think about the deserty area that's around um, the Tri-Cities or where the Columbia River takes a bend out in eastern Washington. And it bends around uh, the Yakima Reservation and uh, bends back towards Portland through the Columbia Gorge, the big um, mountains that make the steep cliffs that the river has carved through. And then it makes its way um, past Hood River to Portland and um, so and then there's these little towns um, that are right around um, Hanford so the whole thing the Columbia generating station is at the old bomb factory um, where they had seven uh, nuclear power plants that were operating when it was churning away in the like 60s in the Cold War time and they were trying to make as much plutonium as they could so they could make a whole bunch of nuclear missiles to have ICBMs and CBMs and up your BBMs and all these BMs all over the place. And so they were making a lot of material there. So then they toned it all down in the 80s and they ended it supposedly. And it was just going to be storage of the nuclear waste from all the bomb making. But they kept churning this little uh, Columbia generating station. It's one of their nuclear reactors and it's um, the same. Uh, General Electric Mark One is was the Fukushima reactor, and so I'm thinking, well, what if uh, accidents an accident were to happen there, caused by uh, an earthquake, and the cooling system screwed up, and it had a meltdown like Fukushima, and then because that just happened just a few years ago, just like four years ago, and um, 2011, 311. 2011, March 11th, and so I would like to see that the Columbia Generating Station is shut down because as it turns out, there's a lot of uh, fault lines that are now being discovered that face right, that right, we've are talked right, about that very before. close, within right. miles, and then now the epicenter of this huge 1872 earthquake that happened that rocked uh, seven states and was felt and from California to British Columbia, it was a um, uh, hundred miles from Hanford was the epicenter of it. And it has tremblers and earthquakes and these small ones in clusters all the time. So it's still quite a, a pivot point of earthquake stuff going on. Anyways, that's quite close. And that is in an article I just read today in the um, that's from the Seattle Times. Um, Sandy Doton wrote a second article. First, she opened my eyes up with an article about the new seismic uh, fault lines that reach from the ocean um, deep 10 miles down inland, even underneath the Cascade Ridge to the Columbia Plateau inland, the basin that supposedly this Cascadia subduction zone earthquake is going to only make it to the Cascades and then peter out, be muffled by the big heavy volcanic mountains that are, are, are there, like anchoring it, and that the Willamette Valley will be ruffled and the inland valley of Washington State around Olympia and all that is going to be very um, ruffled like a rug in this earthquake for five minutes. A 9.0 earthquake expected anytime. And the ocean will have a tsunami 
and it'll go up the rivers a ways. And, um, and so, so when do they expect this to happen? Well, it is past its average interval time between earthquakes. Okay, and so... It's about to end. And you've just heard from somebody from Physicians for Social Responsibility for this area that it that they managed to get it put off till 2019. But this isn't right because it's dangerous. We can't let them wait till then to find out if the earthquake is going to be dangerous. No. That's Turn it off. planning. Turn I mean, off how, how many earthquakes have we had? Wow, that feels so great. I know. Good fire. There's some... Let's see. In a in a translated form, that is uh, solar power, which is nuclear power, is fission, and that's the wood burning, and it's hot and it's warm, Feels and that's a today. lot better to me of a heat than the turning on an electric heater that you know is you sucking up to that uh, poisonous power that could have a, a Fukushima-like event and skew fallout of radioactive particles and radiation of different sorts, but the particles of the blown apart containment building and the apparatus and the reactor core of uranium and hopefully not plutonium. They got caught it. They were going to be running plutonium for fuel there to use up probably some of the bomb waste that's all being stored there. And um, part of America Northwest was part of catching them at um, sneaking it in there and told them they weren't allowed to. It was too dangerous in case it, it blew and had a meltdown. That it was huge plutonium. It's kind of like what they did in St. Louis. They illegally dumped in St. Louis, and now they have this huge mess. And they're saying, well, don't worry, it won't catch on fire, but it's still leaking. And what did they dump? The barium? What was that for? Bomb stuff? Mm -hmm. Some part of the bomb making. And they bumped it in, buried it in a dump in St. Louis. That's right. A lot of it. And I don't know how much it. is a lot. But they say several thousand tons, right? And I never know what's a lot of anything, because if it's ore, like uranium ore. So first, they go to two places that I know in our northwest. Well, is it waste or is it ore? Is that what it is? Well, it's the ore is what they dig out of the ground. And then they smash it up in a mill right near where they mine it out. And there's one in Lakeview, and there's one in the Spokane Indian Reservation in our area. And they, they want to do some in British Columbia. So there's uranium here and there. And so but these mines were not very productive, so they shut them down. And Well, I know the EPA has a whole page of what type of waste is out mm -hmm. at the landfill. Yeah. And they did this extensive study. Have you read it? You I haven't read it. it. So it's the St. Louis Fires. Yeah. Well, let's see uh, what they're suggesting to do because now the EPA is it's part of the super fund. The EPA did this assessment. In the EPA's assessment, it basically said that whatever it is, you know, that the recommended thing is going to uh, exceed the allowable contamination rate. So they can't safely move it. That's what that means. Sounds like some good fireside theater <laughs> farce. It's like ridiculous um, words that um, yeah. mean we're not safe. Right. Well, that's exactly. I mean, if you listen to the nuclear alerts, that's what they all are. These people make a living off of making it sound not so bad. That's their whole. That's yeah. what they get paid. And for. Um, and so we need to spread the word that that's what they're doing. But in specifics, yeah. we have a job to do which is um, to immediately shut down the nuke, then to take care of getting the goop cleaned up because they're allowing the goop to still go from the bomb making, and but the nuke is even meltdown. Not that that...